Welcome to MSG Fight Night. I'm John Dudley, and with me is Mark Breland. And tonight we're going to be taking a look back at another Brooklyn world champion, Zab Jura. Zab, the year's 2000. He's 23 years of age. He's got the world at his feet. What was Zab Jura like back then? Super fast. I mean, here's a guy who's like a young Roy Jones. You know, does everything wrong, but gets away with it because his speed, his reflex, his power, and, you know, that's basically it. He, he really was blazing through the division at that time. That he was. But even Lou Duva says that his early success might have been giving him some troubles for the near future. What did you think of that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you got all of these guys, you know, you got the big entourage and all these guys with you. And, you know, that kind of throws a lot of things off. Well, let's go back to the year 2000, where we'll see Zab Judah defend his title against Teron Millet. And you take a look at Teron Millet. This guy's an interesting fighter. He, at the age of 21, was a victim of a carjacking. He was shot, seriously injured. But he regained uh, strength in his legs and his body and went on to win the IBF title. But he broke his hand when he won the title. And he had to have that operated on earlier this year. He's annoyed that the IBF took the title away and let Zab Judah and Young Bergman fight for his title. So he's got a lot to prove. His style, well, he's tough. He likes to stand and mix. He's a smart boxer. He's very, very highly motivated. I'd say in his strength, he's aggressive. He's always busy. He's an action fighter. And there he is. Teron Millet, 22-1-1, one one, 17 KOs out of St. Louis, Missouri. And you talk about a nice kid, they don't come any better than Teron Millet. If there's any weakness, it's the quality of oppositions he's had at the professional level, and of course the inactivity and the hand injury. And can he outbox the quick, uh, very, very quick Zab Judah in main events to ensure that there's a 24-foot ring here. But this guy wants his title back, and I will promise you this, there'll be fireworks before this is over. Believe me, there'll be fireworks. Well, Zab Judah's entrance will be a little bit more dramatic. They've got the rep artist to shine to introduce Zab, and here he comes. Talking to Lou Duva, who works in the corner of Zab Judah. There's a little bit of concern about a lot of the people that are trying to hang out with Zab because he comes from the tough streets of Brooklyn, New York. And Lou had a great quote. He said, you know, more fighters have been ruined by pats on the back than wax on the chin. Meaning I, this kid, as he develops and makes more money and gets the fame and fortune that comes with being a world champ, has got to watch the surrounding people. But Zab loves the music. He loves the fame. He loves the attention. He's a young man. He's only 23 years old. But he has very distinct following, and the people love him. And a lot of people here, as you can see, that are here from Brooklyn, that are here specifically to see Zab Judah. His last time out, I had the pleasure of calling his fight when he fought Junior Witter in Glasgow, Scotland, on the Mike Tyson card. He won that fight. Witter was a guy that ran. Well, Millet won't run. Millet will engage. It's been since July last year since Millet fought when he fought Virgil McClendon in a tough, tough war and a tough battle. Millet's a very confident guy, but so is Zab Judah. All right, the special words for Zab. You gotta like it. Here he is. Stealing a page out of the Prince Nassim Hamad book. All the special effects. And here he comes, Zab. He got that cocky look in his face. Loaded with confidence, but he's got uppercuts that can back that up. He has tremendous boxing ability, great speed, super quick reflexes. Very fast, both his hands and his feet. But you know something? He's never really been tested as a pro. Jan Bergman, who was ranked number one in the world when they fought for the championship here in last February, is not what I would call one of the super guys in the 140-pound division. 
because the 140-pound division is a division that is loaded with great fighters. Costa Zoo, Sean Bay Mitchell, Randall Bailey, Antonio Diaz, Mickey Ward, Reggie Green, Teddy Reed, Hector Camacho Jr., Shane Area of England, and Ray Oliveira from here in New England, up in New Bedford. Those are all really good 140-pound fighters. And Zab is going to have to start fighting some of these guys now. What type of slay and bang in the streets? What type of stay in the trunk for weeks? In my time with Lou Doobie yesterday, he told me the one thing about Zab is that he's really developing a lot of power all the time. He's only 23 years old. They've hired a strength coach to work with Zab. And he's developing really good strength and, and even much more speed with the strength and conditioning coaches. And Lou says the one thing over his career, Lou Duva told me that strength and conditioning coaches are the way that they're going. Little pyrotechniques. I said they'd be fireworks. I didn't expect this. But not a bad entrance for Zab Judah. As professional boxing steals a page from professional wrestling. They like the show. And Zab creates a show. But again, a Lou Duva's statement on the fact that he said the physical trainer is the way for all the young, really good quality fighters to start going, that they've, uh, that they've got to uh, concentrate on the building the strength and the power and the speed that all go with that. He says to me, does Lou Duva, that I like this kid as the next really super sensation. He's watched him develop since he was 16 years old, Lou's been with him. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. who's standing by, getting ready to make Ladies the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mohegan Sun Casino in Uncasville, Connecticut, for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Main Events, Showtime Championship Boxing, and Mohegan Sun Casino, sponsored by Schlesinger Associates and StudioJ1.com. Exceptional gifts for extraordinary people. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Hiawatha Knight, Supervisor Mahasan Scott, along with the Mohegan Tribal Gaming Commission Unit Chief Jerry Boyle. Judging at ringside from New Britain, Connecticut, Stephen Epstein, from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman, from Chicago, Illinois, Mike Gliena, and introducing our referee in charge of the action, working in this his 18th world title bout, Michael Ortega. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Mohegan Sun Casino, it's showtime. Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing a black trunks and joining us from St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at a ready 139 and one half pounds with a record of 22 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the number one contender and the former IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, introducing uh, Tehran, Tramp Millet. And his opponent across the ring on my right, the defending champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks with black trim, fighting out of his home, Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at a trim and ready 138 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 23 wins, no losses, one no contest, and 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, the undefeated Zad Super Judah. Once again, our referee in charge now to give instructions, Michael Ortega. All right, so Michael Ortega will call them to the center of the ring. The Zab's getting set now. 
Both of these guys are very likable guys. Don't be confused by the cocky attitude and whatnot of Zab Judy. He's really a really nice kid. Let's listen in now. So Mike Ortega from Hamden, Connecticut, working his 18th title fight. On a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Seconds, look at the trunks here. Here up is good. Chief second. Think from here up is good. Okay? Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. All right, so we're set to go. This is for the world championship. 140 pound division of the IBF. Deron Millet has only lost to one other world champion, and that was Deshaun Bay Mitchell, who holds part of this 140 pound championship. Deshaun Bay, the WBA title holder. Zab Judah, who's 22 0 undefeated, is taking this fight like he's fighting a world champ because it was Millet's title that Millet never did lose in the ring. So here we go. Round number one, Teron Millet to the right of your screen. Just touching with that left hand. Don't worry, this will pick up. There'll be more than the fireworks that went off prior to the start of this fight. There'll be plenty of fireworks before this is over. Notice that Zab jabs with his right hand, meaning he's a southpaw. Very quick. You see the speed of Zab Judah? Now, one thing Millette doesn't want to do is set up right in front of this guy unless he's fading and moving. This is one of the best fighters that Teron Millette has ever faced. And Teron's been off for a little bit over a year now. Or just about a year. It was August when he fought Virgil McClendon. Wow, with the left hand, you see Zab grab him and spin him. That's ring experience. Both of these guys had extensive amateur careers. Teron Millette would have gone to the probably the Olympics a few years ago when he was shot and that uh, attempted carjacking and he survived that Mike, let him out let him out let him out Mike Ortega screams in the air break working his 18th world title fight in the silver trunks of Zab Millet felt the power that time the left hand of Zab Judah Judah digs downstairs I thought Millet would start faster but he told me yesterday he's going to be very intelligent in this fight he knows that Zab is very, very quick. And Zab is showing his hand speed, and he showed a little bit of power already. One thing that I noticed in agreement with uh, Lou right. Duva is right. these guys brawl up against the ropes. Okay. That Zab Judah's body the is the much more cut, and the physical training that he's doing with the physical trainer is showing because he's already shown me some more power than I thought I've seen in a while with Zab. Clips him again. Zab unboxing him here in the early going. And I'll tell you this, Millet had better open up a bit. And oh, he dropped Zab Judah with a left hook. Zab was on his way, cruising along. The same thing happened against Young Bergman, you know. Zab will have things going his way all of a sudden. When things are going so well, he opens up. And now he's felt the power of Teron Millet. So Millet, that'll give him the world of confidence now. Uppercut, wow, with the left hand is Teron Millet. Straight left hand. Two shots gobbled up. He's bouncing on rubbery legs right now. He's ready to fall. Mike, Both guys have loaded up shots here in the first round. I told you they'd be explosive in that first round, and I'm glad it happened. I love this as much as you love walking it, believe me. Zab Judah's shown some power. He's been down in the first round, and he just staggered to Ron Ballett. Ballett's going to win this round based on the knockdown. Time. All right, the bell ends. Round number one. But you know something? I'm going to score it a 10-9 round in spite of the fact that Millet scored the knockdown. And you're sitting there waiting. That's his dad, Mark Millet. You know you got the pressure the man. Dave Tenney in there, Kevin like Cunningham. You ain't moving nothing. You're sitting there waiting. Got right back up. Right back. But yo, he was shooting the punch out. Are you still on the outside? There's the shot that cut Millet. Look at these shots landing, landing. Nice crisp right hand, uppercut misses, wow with the left hand. Clips him with the left hand that time, digs to the body, and then all of a sudden he clips him with a left hand. It's a real, you know, one of those flash knockdowns. Watch it again because not only does he get positioning with the left hand, uh, but he gets him off balance, and it's as much as a the punch, he has him off balance. All right, here we go, round number two. Round number one, plenty explosive already. Zab Judah in the silver trunks with his back to you, now to the left of your screen, facing a mighty tough Teron Millet. 
Now, Millette is a much more awkward. He's not as polished a fighter, but he's super, super tough and super determined. So is that. That's why the right-handed fighter against the southpaw, two determined guys, two champs that have never lost in the ring, in a title fight, that is. Millett took that fight against the southpaw, Shambay Mitchell, on short notice, and he probably shouldn't take it, but he had to take it for a shot. And it was too early in his career, to be honest. But he thought he could handle him, and he didn't. This is a different kettle of fish. At 32 years old, it's now or never for Tehran to recapture the title that he never lost. The IBF stripped him the title when his hand was injured, and he was going to be off for about six months more. And they let Judah and Jan Bergman, the one and two ranked guys, fight for it. Judah won it. And Millett thinks he was wrong. Well, tonight is settlement day. It's judgment day for the IBF junior welterweight title, which is the 140-pound division. Nobody has won this round yet. And it's coming up to the halfway point of round number two. Nobody's established himself here in the second round. But Millett better get busier and land some punches or he's not going to win this round. Wide-eyed is Teron Millett. Teron to the right of your screen, digs for the body downstairs with the right hand, catches him with the left hook, comes back with the right hand upstairs. Wild with the right hand is Teron, and he hangs on. Let him out. Let him out. Good job. The referee turning out Mike Ortega saying, hey, let him out, let him out. Keep it clean, and it's been clean so far. But it's been tough. See Millett awkwardly going after the southpaw. He digs to the body. Thanks for that the right hand, right up underneath the elbow. Of Zab Judah, and I think Zab is beginning to realize he's in with a very oh! down goes the left. He's hit with the left hand, and that will give him the world of confidence. Now both guys have been down. Millet caught with a straight hey, left right. hand. And if the way for a right-handed fighter is to fight a southpaw, just throw the straight right hand down the middle. The straight left hand down the middle has got to be the way for a southpaw to beat the right-handed fighter. That time it was. There it is again. He nails him with the left hook. Millett's been cut and staggered, almost staggered again here with 20 seconds to go in the second round. Taking some big headshots. He's ready to go again, but instead he fights back. His legs are very jelly-like in the knees. He's ready to fall back, but he's in great physical condition. Swinging that right hand with great confidence. Awkwardly throwing the right hand. The bill ends. That's a 10-8 round for Judah because he hurt Millett. Now can Millett recover in between? You've got to go to the left. And he's sitting there waiting on the ground. Where you miss a knock, you can't sit there and wait on him. Sir. Dump up on your gap and bring your feet up and keep it working. You're sitting there too long, you're letting the pot shot you. He dictating. You can't let him dictate. You step in and with your, with your, with your step. Cross the way out of Zeb. That's his dad, yo, Judah. The fellow talking in the other corner was Marv Millett. And you saw that shot right down the middle. Watch, watch, watch. Watch the left hand. Boom, right there. You couldn't throw a better punch than that. Just straight right down the middle. Now the question is, has Millett been revived enough in between rounds? And I don't think so. I don't think a guy can be revived from a shot that heavy that close to the end of the round. All right, here we go. Round number three. Let's see if Judah can finish him off. Hawk and Millett reached down to where he had to reach down when he was shot. And that place where all great champions reach. And that's deep into the heart. And all great champions possess that. And a whack on the chin like he took in the last round. Mostly guys can't recover. So Judah was down in the first round. A flash knocked down. Millett was heavily down in the second round. Judah was winning the first round. So I scored the first round 10-9. You ordinarily score when it's a knockdown 10-8, but I didn't think he'd done enough to get a 10-8 round. And it was a flash knockdown of Judah where Millett was severely knocked down. Oh, he sets up that straight left hand. That left hand is causing him some problems. I'll tell you this, if Millett stays in that kill zone inside where Judah can reach him with the left hand, he touches him with the right hand, touches him, loads up the left hand of the body downstairs. Teron has got to engage. His dad is right. He's got to get busy. He's got to throw and get out of there. He's pouring with the left hand. He's got to load up a right hand to try and catch this guy. Try to get him off balance. But don't slip inside the kill zone without throwing. 
Because if you do, this guy will crack you with the left hand. And he's inside. You see him? He's waltzing in without throwing punches inside the kill zone. And he's going to get cracked. Break! Let him out. Break! Step back, please. This is round three. Not as dramatic as the first two, but we're only at the halfway point of round number three. In Uncasville, Connecticut, Mohegan Sun, I'm Bob Sheridan. We're watching Belmonte Productions around the world. Glad that you can be with us. This is the 140-pound championship of the world of the IBF. Zab Judah, the champ in silver trunks. Teron Millette, the former champion in the black trunks. Well, let's get his hands filled right now with the very, very quick a foot and hand speed of Zab Judah. A little southpaw from Brooklyn, a budding superstar. And this 140-pound division, before it shakes out, is going to be a superstar division. Loading up the right hand is Teron Millette. But it misses. It falls short of the chin of Zab Judah. Zab, as good as he is offensive mind, and look at this slick defensive movement here. And then he kind of taunts Millette. I wouldn't suggest you taunt Millette. He's a street brawler from St. Louis, and he will come after you. It's like taunting, uh, you know what they say about the sleeping dog lie? <laughs> Don't make him mad. This guy will cause you some problems. And Zab is the type of guy that it's easy not to like in the ring because he shows a lot of movement. Very cocky attitude in the ring. And that's what Lou Dugas said. Don't you back just in, keep don't this kid's in. head on straight. At 23 years old, keep him around the good people. He's going to be a great little fighter. Well, he is a great little fighter right now. Alette working Fight's hard, but I think that uh, Judah has won this in the third round. Okay. I think he just outboxed him. Alette not hustled him in the third round. Rain. You know what we're going to do, right. folks? We're going to show you the knockdown in the second round because it's been the significant point of this fight. And we'll show you exactly how Zab set this up. Watch him now. Watch the left hand right down the middle. See it right there? Man, he really nailed it. That was back in the second round. We're coming up to round four. You're too fast. Your punches are too fast. Step right. and jab in combination right over there. Just move on. with the same. Throw more right, right hands. Start ripping right. up that body. Now. I want Zab to throw more right hands. And, but do it off the left. The southpaw, what they really mean is, is as Lou was saying, to throw the right hand, he meant throw the left hand more. That's the power hand with the southpaw, of course. There's a straight right hand down the middle that time by Teron Millette. And he's got to get off. His dad wants him to get off more. His dad who's a trainer wants him to get busy in there. Let him out. Good job. And Millette has got to stay busy. Now Zeb kind of laughing at him a little bit. Up on the toes, both guys. One thing I can say about Millette now, he is totally recovered. And he showed me some heart in between the second and third round because usually when a guy gets that hurt and, and knocked down that hard, it's very difficult to recover the next round. He posted a little bit in the third round. But he's back 100% now in this fourth round. If Vallette unofficially won the first round, Judas certainly won the second and the third. And this fourth round, Vallette's a little bit busier. And he's got to stay busy if he's going to win these rounds. You can't let any round sneak away from him because Zab is too quick and too good a boxer. He's got to take the round, and he's got to take it now. This is a slip. Good job Don't by Mike down. Ortega. Right there, realize he slipped. But you know something, folks? When you see guys falling around like that and slipping, that can mean something, too. One thing you must keep is balance in any sport, especially boxing. You got to have good balance to get your punches off with power, and you got to have good balance to be able to gobble them up. See how quick Judah's hands are? Boy, Millette tries to come in and engage, and Judah throws three shots at him. There's the uppercut. Cracks him again with the left hand. Maybe hurt again. Oh, he's got with the left hand. And down he goes for the second time in the fight. Zab Judah really cracked him with a shot. He's taking the count at five. He'll take the standing eight count. Zab right now knows he's in command, and he loves it. He's dropped him for the second time, and I don't think that Teron can recover from this. There's only a minute to go. This guy's got tremendous heart. He better either grab him or start throwing some punches. Because Judah is filled with confidence. Right, him He's Let doing him the right thing, Stop tying him up. Stop holding. Stop holding. But both the knockdowns 
that Zadrin have scored have been the type of knockdowns that have taken the legs and all the zing out of Karan Malek. His Zab showing the flash. He cracks him again with the right hand. Loading up a shot that time. I don't think he's going to score that. I guess he is scoring that as a knockdown. Four, he tripped over his legs. Five, That's going to be scored as being six, down twice. Seven. Hey, come here. Come give me. You all right? Continue. Yes, sir. No. He stops the fight. He stops the fight. He looks into the eyes of Teron Millette and says, no, it's all over. Come on, Mike. Very good call. Well, he looked into the eyes and said, no, you can't continue. He seemed like he wanted to go. He said yes, but in the referee's opinion, and when you're looking into the eyes of a man whose eyes are glassed over, you better stop the fight. And that's exactly what Mike Ortega did. So while Teron Millet uh, just proved to be no match at all, the Southpaw Judah was sensational tonight because this kid, Millet, is a terrific fighter. And when you see the knockdowns, Millet was able to, you know, get his left foot outside of the Southpaw Judah, but every time the knockouts occurred, Judah got his forward foot on the outside of Millet's, so when he cracked him, he'd fall right over the leg, almost like he was pushing him down. And that's what happened in the second knockdown in the fourth round. But there was power behind it. Of course, now Millet has recovered and probably can't understand why they stopped the fight, but at the time, when Michael Ortega stopped the fight, his eyes were glassed over. He asked him if he wanted to continue. He did say yes, but when he looked forward, Mike looked in his eyes. Now, that's it. And that was it. And it was a good call, good stoppage by the referee, Mike Ortega, working his 18th world title fight. And this kid, Zab Judah, is a budding star. And again, when I say he appears so cocky, and he's a guy that you like not to like sometimes but i tell you he's a nice kid a really nice kid comes from a terrific family all the people in his family his brothers are all fighters his dad was a fighter a terrific fighter this is a star that you're going to be seeing a lot two times u.s national champion three-time new york golden glove champ beat hector camacho jr in the olympic trials the lost in the finals of the olympics Talk to you. One of How seven brothers that fights. And he says, hey, it's my time. And you know something? I think it is his time. I want to thank the people from uh, main events, Kathy Duva, Gary Shaw, Dennis Dolchin, and Colin Moretti for their help uh, getting us ready this week as we show you the final segment of the fight. And you see that time he just slips over the foot, the outstretched foot, and the referee right on top of it, making the proper decision, calling that a slip. Remember, when you're fighting at a southpaw, you've got to get positioning with your feet. Now, watch where the feet are. You see this? Every time that he gets him in trouble, Zab has got his right foot to the outside where the power is. That's where you want it to be. And that's the power. And look at the eyes there. Watch this now. Nice feigning movement. Then he comes back. Boom! Cracks it right over the ear. And then he's loading up the shot, and then he falls over the outstretched foot, but there's a little tap on the end of that, so the referee called that a knockdown. You almost have to. Watch it closely, though. He comes in, he catches with a punch. And again, it's a question of balance. He cracked him with the right hand. He loads up his shot and hits him as he's coming forward. By that time, he had his foot on the outside, and while it looked like a trip, there was a punch involved there, so the referee had to call it a knockdown. And he takes a standing eight count. And from the previous punch, his eyes were still glassy. Now watch this. This is the end. Now watch where he looks. He looks right into the eyes, and that's it. He says no. No. And you see his eyes right there with the lids hanging down? you got to agree with the official there. Also from the Showtime Network, we want to thank Jason Oberlander, Jay Larkin, Robin, Robin Feigenbaum, and Gordon Hall for their help in coordinating things for us this week with Belmonte Productions. And, of course, uh, like the Greek Randolph, who always works stats with us, we appreciate uh, his help throughout the week here, too. It's been a wonderful trip here, and we had a couple of terrific fights for you. You saw Juan Luscano and a split decision victory over Jesse James Lehan, a terrific 10-round fight. And then this one only got to the fourth round, but there were four knockdowns in the fight. 
Sam Judah was first to get out after winning most of the first round. He had uh, flash knockdowns scored. And his Jimmy Lynn Jr. We have the time of two minutes, 47 seconds. In round number four, our referee in charge, Michael Ortega, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still the IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, Zeb Super Judah. I ain't going nowhere. Hassan Zoo, bring it on, baby. Bring it on.